It's Friday, and it's the bottom of the first hour of the Steve Molesberg Show, and that means it's time to welcome in our friend Dr. David Samadhi, who is currently vice chair of the Department of Urology and chief of robotics and minimally invasive surgery at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine, but he will soon be the chairman of urology at Lenox Hill Hospital here in New York and opening up a whole new clinic. Hello, Doc. How are you, sir? Hey, my friend. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good to talk to you. Okay, so... Um, you know, when Angelina Jolie uh, underwent her, her, uh, her uh, elective surgery, it was big news because uh, of the fact she was Angelina Jolie. And now we have the death, unfortunately, of uh, James Gandolfini uh, at the age of 51. And, uh, you know, we had one of his fellow actors from The Sopranos on yesterday, uh, Joseph Ganascoli, who I went to school with. So we're a few years older than James was. And, 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 and um, Joey said it's a wake-up call because he says, wow, I'm older. Um, I smoke more than he smoked. I'm also overweight, he said. So, so talk about the fact the autopsy has confirmed it was a heart attack. We also know also that uh, there was drug use and alcohol use, not, in, in, not found in his body, but he had a, a history of, of abusing those substances. So talk about, before we get to the drug use, is this typical age for an overweight male, you know, to, to, to have a heart attack? Well, you know, as you, as you know, cardiovascular disease and heart attack is the lead, leading cause of death in America. And unfortunately, if he lived the way he, he acted on the movie, he has a lot of risk factors. Obesity, as you mentioned, was a big factor. He had high, probably high cholesterol. Um, he may have had high blood pressure as a result of obesity. And then on top of it, he also had the nightlife and the stress, smoking. All of these risk factors are all part of massive heart attack that he had, unfortunately. I think that what he could have done in order to prevent this, and the message to a lot of people out there is, you need to screen and you need to make sure that you check early on, especially if he maybe he may or may not have had family history. So if you have that, you want to make sure that you start early on in your early 40s to check for your blood control, to cut down on smoking and alcohol. All of those cause what we call atherosclerosis or blockage of your artery and eventually can cause this kind of massive heart attack. Now, if you throw into the mix, doctor, um, a, a history of uh, cocaine abuse and alcohol abuse, uh, that I guess that changes the scenario, uh, you know, very much, very strongly for the for the worse. That's absolutely what it's going to do. Is it's going to constrict the vessels that bring the blood flow to the heart, and if there is some underlying disease, all of these drugs and uh, alcohol can can even make it more narrow and can cause this kind of heart attack. So. The other thing that comes up all the time is, how do you know that you're having an heart, a heart attack? And a lot of times it could present itself as just cold sweat. You may be short of breath. You may have chest pain that radiates to your left arm. Sometimes they describe it as an elephant sitting on your chest. And you want to make sure you don't ignore these because a lot of times time is of an essence. And if you catch them early, bring them to the hospital, we're able to give them medications and dilate those vessels or put a stent in and prevent this kind of massive heart attack, which there was really no chance for him to come back. And I'm a, for, I'm a big believer in that if you if you think you're having a heart attack, uh, chew on a on a on a, a whole aspirin, chew it and swallow you know and swallow it maybe a sip of water. I mean that they say that that could uh, while you're waiting for help could also could also, you know could alleviate a, a blockage. That's absolutely correct. And if you have access to aspirin. You should, you should definitely do it in case there's any kind of blood clot that can dissolve it until you get to the hospital. Absolutely right. And then I got one more for you, and, and I, I heard a, 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 someone talking about this as I was driving in today. If the New York Post is correct, if he had um, at least eight drinks during his final meal and, and very high fatty food, um, and, you know, and, and maybe, maybe not him, but someone who's not used to that kind of thing, someone who on a holiday or a vacation overindulges in a he very heavy fatty meal and drinks a lot when they're not used to doing that uh, and they have risk factors. Could that, could that be a trigger for an immediate kind of heart attack? Well, you're absolutely, the key is that he probably had the underlying problem. The vessels are getting narrower and narrower and then you start like putting this kind of pressure on your heart by putting a lot of alcohol, what we call vasoconstriction or narrowing of the vessels, then you put all of these fatty food, which is not about one night. It's not about the night that he uh, had the heart attack. This is a chronic or, or long-term issue. 
where he's been basically taking this kind of fatty food. So all of that sits in the liver, it sits in the arteries that go to the heart and goes to the, to the, to the brain. And, and over time, it can cause that kind of cholesterol plaques. That plaque is going to block the, the, the artery and the blood to go to the heart and end up with this kind of massive heart attack. So lifestyle, as you mentioned, plays a huge role. Alcohol, smoking, obesity, overweight, high fat diet, all of that. These are all risk factors. That it's, it's unfortunate. You have a great actor with a great future. Everyone loved him on these movies and now, unfortunately, he's not with us. So this is a big message to a lot of people out there who really need to go for screening. The other side of it is also the, the, the uh, author who died of, of prostate cancer at the age of 47. Yeah. I'm sure you heard about this. Vince Flynn, also at a very young age, died of prostate cancer, and we should, could have done a lot of screening for him as well. So whether it's for prostate cancer or it's heart disease, screening saves lives. And if you have family history, you need to start early on. I, I thought of that immediately because you don't often hear of a 44-year-old uh, man dying of, of prostate cancer. And uh, they said he had a long battle. And I, I couldn't help but wonder if he had PSA blood tests or, or the digital exam, you know, for, with any regularity. It probably could have been caught and prevented. And you know something, Steve, this is going to become even more problem because everyone is saying that to start the screening at the age of 55, and we're going to see a lot of young people like him who would die from this. I have in my practice a lot of young 40s who come with very aggressive cancers, and if we would delay this, this is the kind of result we're going to have. Yeah. So they need to get their PSA checked. Unfortunately, he had radiation, which wasn't a good option for him, and you could see that in his last uh, book, he talks about pain in this pelvic area. And, and he passed away. So when you read on all these New York Times and other places where it says prostate cancer is a slow growing disease, you die with it, not from it, it's not always true. There are many different types of prostate cancers and people need to educate themselves about this. We're talking to Dr. David Samadhi, Vice Chair, Department of Urology, Chief of Robotics and Minimally Invasive Surgery at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, soon to be Chair of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital. All right, let me ask you about obesity. Um, yeah. the, the classification now by the American Medical Association of Obesity as a Disease. Um, what, what are going to be the ramifications of that? Well, we, we certainly uh, we know that it, it's a major risk factor for, again, stroke, for heart disease, and, and we're struggling with obesity in this country for many years. It's costing us billions of dollars, a burden in the healthcare system. But, you know, I have a little bit of a problem in making it an official disease because it has some other ramification about your insurance uh, expenses go up. People are going to, uh, going to have a hard time uh, dealing with everything else that comes in. Once there's a stigma of a disease on you, then it may have a lot of other ramifications. So um, I'm not sure what the best way is to deal with obesity, except we've been preaching about the fact that you need to exercise, watch your diet, portion control. But I have mixed feeling about really calling it a real diagnosis with the ICD code and official diagnosis. I think there could be some other agenda behind this, but uh, no one would, would question that this obesity is a real serious health hazard in this country. All right. We, and finally, doctor, uh, the WHO, the World Health Organization, is having an emergency meeting to respond to this uh, SARS-like outbreak. I think this is the same one you and I have touched on in the past. Um, it, it, it's, um, they're looking for a way to combat this um, virus that's been described as the single biggest worldwide public health threat after claiming 38 lives mostly in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it, it's a Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. They've called it MERS, MERS. Um, so, you know, what, 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 could we, uh, what do we have to fear here? You know something, I studied this in depth and also we covered this on Fox News house call, Sunday house call. Um, I don't know, uh, Mark may disagree with me, but I'm not really concerned about this. I think the numbers all over the world are extremely small. The idea behind this is for the hospital and for uh, WHO to make everyone aware of this. It's certainly good recommendations. I don't think there's a huge threat over here and sometimes in the media, um, this kind of stuff gets a little more publicized, and, and, but there's nothing to panic. There could be some cases that may come to this country as a result of the global business and travels. Um, but right now, I don't see any immediate danger. But we, we're watching this very carefully and see what happens. The numbers again, are very, very small. 
And unless we find cases in U.S., where you know, I wouldn't worry about this at this point. Well, let's hope they stay very, very small, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much. We'll talk to you thank next you. week, and we always appreciate.